Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Avid Blogs, and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to continue our talk on getting started fast with Media Composer for high res workflows, but in this lesson, we're going to change it up just a little bit. We've been talking about high res workflows, which a lot of people think means, you know, larger than HD, you know, 2K, 4K, Ultra HD. But high res workflows can be talking about using high resolution, higher than HD footage but inside of odd shaped project sizes. Now, where would you ever use something like this? Most people think, oh, Kev, I would never do something like that. Believe it or not, I actually do a lot of work in odd frame sized projects, like projects that I do for Instagram. As we're all familiar with Instagram, Instagram is a square resolution project, basically a one-to-one -one resolution. So in this lesson, what we're gonna talk about is setting up your project, we're gonna talk about getting your larger than HD media. In this case, I'm gonna work with some 4K media inside of an Instagram project, and I'm gonna show you how we can lay out some very simple titles since in odd shaped project sizes, we don't have access to the standard title tool or the marquee tool. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And we are of course going to need to create a new project to work with our Instagram sized frame size. So let's create a new project. And why don't we just call this Instagram project? And of course we are working in a one-to-one -one aspect ratio project. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to click on my drop down. I'm going to come down to custom here and let's create a frame size. And because we're working in 4K, it really doesn't even matter what the frame size is that we're going to work in. So why don't we just pick something like um, a thousand by a thousand? Why not? Let's just do that. There we go. And we're going to leave the frame size as, or the frame rate, pardon me, as 23,976 frames per second. I'm simply going to say, okay, to launch the project. Now, of course we get things a little bit out of whack here, but that's no problem. All we have to do is simply navigate up to Windows. We're going to come down to Workspace. We're going to choose, of course, Source and Record Editing. Now, what's important to keep in mind is don't get thrown off by the fact that this looks like they're 16 by 9 screens. Well, they're actually not. You'll see that if I click on the Composer window, these are actually square viewers. What we're going to do is just adjust their size a little bit here, just so that we can have them as the proper aspect ratio without the timeline block in it. And let's bring in some footage. I'm gonna right click now. We're gonna to wanna to AMA link to this footage here. We're gonna say link to media. Now I've got some red footage here and it really doesn't matter which footage I pick. I'm just gonna pick the first six shots and I'm simply going to say open. Now what's important to keep in mind and what throws people for a bit of a loop, you know, especially if they're starting out, is they link to their footage and they think, okay, great, I'm ready to start working. And as they double click on their clips, they're gonna notice that the clips look exceptionally stretched. And this is not what we want. Okay, what we need to do is we need to get in and tell Media Composer that these frames actually need to be cropped or resized properly for the type of project that we're working in. Now, we can do this on a clip by clip basis or I can select all the clips and do them all in one shot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it to one clip and then I'll do it to all of the rest of them again, like I said, in one shot. So let's just pick the first clip right here. This is a good one because this shot looks really stretched, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna select the clip, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna navigate down here to my source settings. Now you remember we talked in a previous lesson about how we can get in and because this is red footage, I can get in and I can adjust a whole bunch of different parameters of this footage. We're gonna leave this for now because we're gonna assume that you've already done all of this work. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna head right on over to the FrameFlex window right here. Now you can see right away, the original image is 4096 by 2304. You can see the aspect ratio. This is almost, actually this is 16 by nine. You can see 16 by nine there, one to one uh, square pixel aspect ratio. Now here's the issue that we run into. You can see the frame size that we're going to right down here at the bottom, which is of course square. The only problem is, is that right now, and I'm just gonna move my source settings window up beside my composer window, just so that you can see what happens as I'm doing this work here. You'll see that the aspect ratio right now is set to be 16 by nine, which is not what we want. So what a lot of people think is, okay, I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna choose one of these, but I don't, I don't really know which one to choose. And they start going through, they're like, well, maybe that's close. Uh, you know, uh, no, that's not really quite right. What's important to keep in mind is that the aspect ratio that we had set at the beginning is really what we want to stick with. And we know that Instagram is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. We're, you know, in a project, it's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Perfect. 
What we want to do then is come into our aspect ratio drop down. I'm going to come down to custom and all we're going to do is simply set this to be one to one. I'm simply going to say OK and you're going to see now that things are very out of whack. OK, that's OK for the purposes of what I'm doing right now. I'm simply going to say apply. I'm going to leave them out of whack and I'm going to say OK because I want to show you how we can get in and adjust this. I'm just going to pick part of this clip here. It doesn't matter which part. I'm going to select a range of it. I'm just going to drop it into my timeline. Remember, none of the editing functionality has changed as far as working in an odd frame size project. We're just going to drop it in. Now you'll see that, you know, obviously we can't see that tower that's in the shot and I really need to. Now the easiest way to get in and adjust the frame flex window is to simply step into effects mode and as soon as I do you'll see now that I can actually see the entire frame of the original 4K clip and I can see the frame flex bounding box that I can get in, I can make smaller if I want to, but in our case all I want to do is simply grab that frame flex window and just drag it over to the right just like such. As soon as I do, you'll see that we're now framed up exactly the way that we need to be in this shot. And if I step out of effects mode, we're now basically all set to go. I can hit play. This is going to play back in real time. Now remember, this is a 4K clip playing back AMA Link 2 in real time. Very nice. Okay. But here's the problem. So what happens if I drop this in? And I'm just going to undo what I just did here. Okay. And I'm just going to drop this back in like such. Now let's say that this clip was hypothetically framed almost the way that I wanted. And I had someone come in and sit down and say, oh, that's, that's not framed how we really wanted it to be. So you know what? I did you a favor. I went back to your original clip and I reframed it the way that you want. So let me just do that. I'm just going to select the clip again, right click, and I'm going to come down to source settings. There we go. I'm going to come back to the frame flex window. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom this in a little bit. And I'm going to reposition the window right here. And I'm going to say apply. Now you're going to notice that as soon as I do that and I say, okay, it's been updated in the preview window but it hasn't been updated in the timeline. And most people think, oh, now I gotta go back and I have to re-edit every clip in my timeline. That's gonna take me forever. I have 150 clips that are like this. Don't worry, that's already too much work. All we have to do to update all of the changes that we've made to all of these clips in our timeline is to simply right click on our timeline and I'm gonna navigate right down here to refresh sequence. Once there, I can choose any one of these options. Now, in most cases of what we're doing, I would simply select aspect ratio and reformatting options. But what I can also do is just simply say, update all and boom, there we go. So if I had, like I said, you know, 100 to 150 changes that were made to all of the clips in my bin, as soon as I refresh my timeline, everything is going to be updated. Okay, now, what we can also do here is I'm just gonna select all of these clips. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna come down to source settings, okay? I'm going to come to my window here and what we're going to do for right now is I'm just simply going to set them up to be all one to one. We're not necessarily going to worry too much about framing here. I'm going to say OK. That's not too bad for the purposes of what we're doing. You'll notice now that since I have multiple clips selected, I can now simply come down and say apply to all. Once I do, I can now simply say OK and every clip that I go to is going to be updated. Very nice. Now you can see that that clip's framed a little bit odd. I'm just going to delete this last clip because I'm not going to use it here. Let's just delete that clip here. And let's just drop some more clips in. Now, you know, this clip, I don't want it to be too long. Okay. And let's just grab the next clip. That's not too bad for framing. I don't want these clips to be too long because we're going to talk about putting a title in here now. Okay. Okay. And got one more after this one here. I think that last clip was a little bit too long here. Okay. Uh, let's come back up here. Yeah, eight seconds I think was a bit too long. Let's drop that in, perfect. Okay. And we're ready to now drop a title in. So let's get in, let's talk about adding a very basic title to this timeline because what's gonna happen is people get all excited. They're like, okay, perfect, we're almost done. I just need to put a title in the lower right hand corner to identify where we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to clip and I'm simply going to come down to new title. And as soon as you do, you're going to get, it's not necessarily an error message, but it's a window that's basically going to tell you to please install new blue titler and use it for this project size. Most people think that the title tool is not supported inside of larger than HD projects, but it's also not supported inside of custom frame size projects. 
But what's great about working in Media Composer, especially if you're working in the most recent version, version obviously 8, where we've supported larger than HD projects, is that if you are a perpetual license user, you have access to New Blue Titler Pro 2, and for all of you subscription editors, you have access to New Blue Titler version 2.5. The question, of course, is, well, how do you get your free software? Very easy. All you need to do is simply navigate up to the application manager. If you come on over here to the apps tab, you'll see right down here, you can download Titler Pro 2 or Titler Pro 2.5, depending on which license you have on your system. Once you have it downloaded and installed, to actually apply the title is very simple. I'm just gonna create a new video layer here. There we go. I'm just going to add a couple edits here because I want this title to stretch across a few clips. There we go. And I'm going to call up the effects palette, Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. I'm simply going to navigate down to New Blue Titler Pro 2.5. I'm going to drag and drop it onto V2. As soon as I do, you'll see that the title is going to appear. There we go. It's asking me to enter text. And let me just get in and create a very, very basic title that's going to go in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Okay, now if you're like me and you find yourself updating your titles constantly because of changes to your production, I know you love the right click and edit title command by simply right clicking on your title and saying add or edit title. Well, guess what? That functionality works as well with Titler Pro. So all I need to do is simply say add edit title. If you're working in 2.5 of Titler Pro, you'll be brought to the quick edit window. If you're working in version two, you'll be brought right to the title designer window. So all we need to do is simply say, okay, Let's launch the title designer. You'll see that we can enter some text and we're just gonna call this little segment uh, by the water, okay? Cause we got water, I think pretty much in almost every shot here. And we're gonna call this um, overseas in Asia, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select my text here and let's adjust its size just like this. We're just gonna bring it right down. I'm just gonna reposition it right over here like such, okay? Now once I have it pretty much where I want it to go, I'm just gonna move this right down here and I think the text is actually a little bit big. So let's just select by the water and much like I had just done, we're just gonna shrink it down a little bit. Don't need that title to be that big. This is looking pretty good, I think. I'm gonna put it right there and let's just adjust the actual text to be impact just cause I want it to stand out a little bit. We'll just position it over here in the lower left-hand corner and I wanna make sure that it has a drop shadow. It does have a shadow, let's just adjust its opacity. We're just gonna bring it right up here. And let's uh, give it a little bit more of a blur. There we go. And we could adjust the offset, maybe we'll make it five and minus five, okay? That at least stands out a little bit more than it had done before. Okay, now once this title is ready to go, all I need to do is to simply close the title design window. We're going to apply it to this title. Once it's done analyzing the title and caching it, you're gonna see that the title appears right there in the lower left-hand corner. Now, if I wanted to get in and put some fades in here, like of course we're probably going to need to, what I can do, you'll see that the title actually fades in automatically on its own and fades out. But if it didn't, all we'd have to do is to simply come in and we can add a fade right here, but we don't have the ability to do a fade effect command because that doesn't work with third party effects. So if you wanted to actually keyframe it, you need to step into effects mode and keyframe it right here from within the effects window. Or you can see that we can come in and simply add a dissolve off the top starting and at the end, ending at the cut, and we'd have a fade in and fade out. But the great thing is with this title, it fades in and fades out on its own. Now, one thing you're also gonna love about Titler Pro, if I right click and say add edit title, if you're not you know, if you're not too happy with the fade in and fade out, the great thing is, is that it ships with, and I'm just gonna leave the fade out at the end here so it does fade out on its own. It actually does come shipped with a bunch of presets that you can actually use to animate your title. And let me show you what I mean. I'm just gonna come back to the beginning. I'm gonna hit play. Now I wanna make sure this title starts right at the beginning here. There we go, okay? I'm just gonna hit the space bar to play this and I'm gonna head over here to the library. And once I'm in the library, you'll see that by default, I'm on the styles option, which of course I could come in and update the style of my text by simply hovering over it. And remember, we haven't selected it yet, but I can get a preview of what the text is gonna look like in any one of these preset style looks inside of the style category, very cool. But we don't want any of these right now. What we want is some transitions and I'm gonna head into the animation section here and I'm gonna come into the fade in category. Once I'm in the fade in category, again, all I have to do is simply hover over any one of these preset animations 
and I think the one that I'm going to go with is pop letters here to give me a real-time preview of what this is going to look like in my timeline and if I'm happy with this preset all I have to do is simply double click on it it's now ready to go in my timeline all I have to do now is simply close the title designer it's going to cache and render the file out for me so that basically when that's done it's going to appear in my media composer timeline I can now come back and hit play and you'll see that, that animation is now all set to go in my timeline and of course I still have that standard fade out that was at the end but if I didn't, I could just simply, quickly and easily, add one of my own. Okay, now I know the last question you probably have is, Kev, well, how do we now get this footage out if I needed to, you know, make an H.264 out of it or, you know, take it into After Effects or something like that? But of course, I'm going to leave that for the last lesson.